In the previous video, we set everything up for the finite precision version of the arithmetic coding algorithm. And in this video, we're going to write down the encoder. Now, fortunately, we've done all of the hard work for the finite precision encoder when we modified the infinite precision encoder to integrate those rescaling operations into the process of finding the interval from A to B. So the finite precision encoder is going to look very similar to that modified infinite precision encoder, except there will be some additional modifications to account for the fact that we're gonna be using integers instead of real numbers. So here we go, the finite precision encoder. And it takes as input, of course, the sequence to be encoded, x1 up to xk, terminated by the end of file symbol 0. And we're also going to take in, as before, these c and d vectors to determine the probabilities. You could also take in p, but, but let's take in the c's and d's since they're already in, or you could take in r, but let's just take in c and d like before. And let's also take in this capital R. You could determine that from c, but let's go ahead and make that an input argument. And now, as before, in the infinite precision case, we have some, the same sort of initializations. A is initialized to zero, and B is now initialized, instead of to one, we initialize it to whole. So whole is playing the role of the, the number one. And everything, just to, I'm gonna say this over and over probably, we're doing everything in integers. So B is whole, and we also, like before, we initialize this counter, this S counter for the number of middle splits that we're gonna do. All right, and now, similarly to before, we're going to have this for loop as i goes from 1 up to k plus 1. We're going to loop over the input symbols, and in each iteration of this for loop, we'll do something very similar to before. We will set w to be the difference of b and a, and whoops, keep a there. Now, and then we're going to update a and b just as before, except that so it's going to be i'll write it this way a plus round w dxi divided by r so let me write the second step here the, the a update and then i'll explain what i mean by this notation here round w cxi divided by r now, remember that in, in the infinite precision algorithm, we at this step we had b became a plus, uh, what was it, d, w dxi, and a became a plus w cxi. But now remember that d is the unnormalized version. D, the d's and c's are, de are defined in terms of r, and we have to divide by this capital R which is the sum of all the R's in order to get the same thing as before, in, it, in order to get the probabilities. So that's what the division by R is doing. And what do I mean by this round thing here? What's going on with this? So let me explain what I mean here. So we're doing everything in integers. So let me write that down. That is, that's important. So everything in, everything is in integers. So at no point in this algorithm are we going to have anything represented as a floating point number. So what do I mean by this, this operation right here? So let me explain this. So in this expression, so look at just inside this, inside the parentheses here, w dxi divided by, divided by r. These are all integers. w is an integer. It's the difference of these two integers. a and, a and b are always going to be integers dxi is an integer because it's the sum of these, you know, some c's and r, r's are all, the r's are all integers, remember, r's are all integers. And this capital R is also an integer because it's the sum of all the little r's. So, but when we divide by capital R, this as a mathematical expression, this is not necessarily an integer. But we want to keep everything in integers. So what I mean by this round, this thing here, is, is some language specific operation. So this is a language 
specific. It's going to depend on whatever language, programming language you have happen to be using. And this is meant, what I mean by this is choose the integer that is as close as possible to this mathematical quantity. So, you know, mathematically speaking, that's, you know, you take this and then you, you round it. But you might not actually uh, execute this operation. You're not actually going to execute this operation inside the parentheses when you do this. Because that would be, you know, not necessarily an integer. And everything is in integers, remember. Everything is in integers. So, for example, let me just give you how I did it. I implemented this in Python. And in Python, if you have integers, if w, dx, i, and r are integers, and you do this operation right here, asterisk, asterisk is multiply, then this in the indeed returns an integer. And what it does is, is it returns the largest integer that's less than or equal to this quantity. In other words, it, it rounds down. So, you know, when I put round here, you don't actually have to get exactly the closest integer. Maybe you round up, maybe you round down, but you want to closely approximate this mathematical quantity, which is not necessarily an integer. So, and I think uh, C works the same way in this, this way. So in another language, I don't know, you might have to use something like division with remainder in order to get that integer, something like that. But you, you don't, you're not gonna use uh, floating point. So not floating point. It might work with floating point, but it's best to do everything in integers so you can control exactly the rounding that's occurring. Okay, so that's that. And now, so now we continue. And we have, as in our modified version of the algorithm, we have the following loops. So while B is less than half, or a is greater than half, we're gonna do the following, one of the following two things. And note here, instead of one half, instead of 0.5, I'm using our predefined half quantity, which is, which is some large integer. So if, if we're in the first case, b less than half, which we've called case zero, then we'll do the following, emit, zero, one, one, a bunch of ones. We're gonna emit S1s and do the rescaling operations. Set A equal to two times A, actually, let me put that on the next line. Let me make a little more space here. S is gonna be reset to zero. A is going to be two A minus half and B is going to be to b minus, oops, that's not what I wanted to say. That's the next line, sorry. A is two, actually I could just go ahead and, that's small enough, let me just put it up here. So a becomes two a and b becomes two b. All right, otherwise, if a is greater than half, or in this case, which we've called case one, then we'll do the following. We do the symmetric thing. Emit one and a bunch of zeros, and we will emit S zeros, reset S to zero. And now let me put it down here because it's gonna be a little longer. A becomes two, A minus half. We're subtracting half instead of 0.5 this time and b becomes 2b minus half. That's supposed to say, that's supposed to say s, oops, s zeros, make that a little more clear, s zeros. So this is exactly the same as before, except that we're doing everything in integers. So we use half instead of one half. And now we have the other loop of this sort. So now we have this other while loop. So while A is, so now we're in the case S, the middle sort of thing. While A is greater than quarter and B is less than three quarters, or I'll just put three times quarter. 
and we increment s, so this is just like before, increment s, and a becomes, that's an a, a becomes 2a minus quarter. Remember, quarter is whole divided by 4. b is 2b minus quarter. So this is just like before, except that we're using our integer uh, valued quantities instead of our real valued quantities. And let me uh, indicate the nesting structure just to be just to be clear. I'm using sort of once again I'm using Python sort of notation. So this if else if a is greater than a half then do all of these things here. This while loop contains this stuff and the for loop the for loop contains all of this. And that is the end of that for loop, just like before in our modified infinite precision algorithm. And now, once again, just like in our modified infinite precision algorithm, we increment s one more time and we have our, our, our final sequence that we emit. So if a is less or equal to quarter, then we're in the sort of the, the sort of Q case that we called it way back when. And we emit zero and a bunch of ones, and the number of ones we emit is S. Otherwise, we're in the three Q case, the, the three quarters, the third quarter case. So we emit one and a bunch of zeros, in particular S zeros. Zeros. And then we are done. That's it. So the output output of the algorithm is the sequence that uh, the sequence of zeros and ones that was emitted. So let me just I'll denote that by beta 1 up to beta m. It's the sequence sequence binary sequence I'll put binary sequence emitted during the operation of the algorithm. All right, so this is all just exactly the same as our modified infinite precision algorithm where we integrated these while loops here. We integrated these rescaling operations into the process of narrowing down A and B. And by doing that, by doing this, by integrating these in here, this is the key to making the finite precision algorithm work. So we saw before that, that these operations guaranteed that this quantity, this W here, the difference between B and A was guaranteed to be at least quarter. It was one quarter before, and now it's gonna be at least quarter, which is fantastic because that allows us to know that we're not gonna lose precision. So when, when this is big enough, then these quantities here, this rounding off operation that occurs, is, is going to be at a, a good, it's gonna be a good approximation. And that's what we want. We want it to be as good an approximation as possible in order to get good compression performance. The worse this rounding is, the worse our compression performance is. And in, and in fact, and, and of course, you know, in order for the finite precision algorithm to work at all, this, this rescaling is, is absolutely critical. Because otherwise, eventually A and B are going to be the same. So thanks to our, our hard work of you know, modifying the infinite precision version of the algorithm to integrate these rescaling operations, we were able to just, just basically with very minor modifications to handle these, this integer valued representation with very mon minor modifications obtain our finite precision encoder. And one thing to note here that I, perhaps I should point out is that the final A and B that you get, it should be clear that, that they're not going to be the same as in the infinite precision algorithm. I mean, of course, well, we're doing, using integers, so that's different. But even if you were to rescale back down, they're going to be different because we're, we're rounding things off. And so you'll have some degradation of your compression performance depending on how good that rounding is you know because the compression performance depended on the final uh, the width of the final interval being equal to the product of the probabilities you know px1 px2 up to pxk times p0 and it's not going to be exactly that anymore 
So there will be a slight degradation of compression performance. But as you can imagine, I mean, if you have a pretty good level of precision, I mean, if, if you know, whatever, um, if whole is, is a pretty big number, if, if, the, if precision, the number of bits you're using, is pretty large, then you're going to be able to approximate P very well in this way with these, these RIs divided by R and so this and this rounding that occurs since the difference between B and A this W is always going to be at least quarter this rounding is is not going to be very significant so you'll still you're, you're still uh, going to get very good compression performance it it's a uh, you know uh, you suffer on the order of you know a few bits or, or tens of bits or this this order of magnitude of degradation of compression performance when you're using a reasonable amount of um, of precision I mean of course that I'm just saying that to give you a rough order of magnitude it, it all depends on how large the file is that you're encoding is and 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 how you know maybe some of the P's are, are very small and so it's hard to approximate them it all depends on all these things but just to give you a rough order of magnitude it, it's pretty good the approximation is pretty good all right so that's the finite precision encoder and next we'll look at the finite precision decoder we'll write down the algorithm for that and as you can imagine we're going to have to make some pretty significant modifications to our infinite precision decoder because we need to integrate these rescaling operations into it you know uh, as you might imagine this rounding is going to play um, it's going to it's going to affect how we need to do the decoding and what what a, a key part of the decoder is doing these rescaling operations at exactly the same points in the decoding process as when they were done during the encoding process so that whatever rounding occurs is done in exactly the same way and that is crucial I can't stress that enough it's crucial that these be done at exactly the same points and the rounding be done in exactly the same way so for for that reason that the decoder is quite subtle it is tricky to get your decoder to work but we're going to look at in the next video how to handle that